What's going on guys? Chris Ramsey here and thanks for tuning in. Today I'd like to share with you a little video about my card clip collection. So this entire video is going to be devoted to examining and looking at the different card clips that I have, checking out the differences, where they come from, what the point is of card clips, and uh, just, just some basic card clip porn. So thanks for tuning in and let's check them out. All right, so first, first one on the list is this black porper clip. So Joe Porper is renowned for his card clip making. I believe he was the very first to make these uh, metal card clips that were molded from one single piece and bent into place, handcrafted. And this little baby here was sent to me by my buddy Daniel Madison. This is a Daniel Madison and Joe Porper, as you can see, made in, made in the USA. Sleek black, nice design. I love the simplicity of just the logo there. Daniel sent this to me a while back. I think when we first became friends, uh, he sent me a package and this was in it, so still have it today. Next up, another Porper original. This is from a good friend of mine, Laura London, who also has her initials right there, her logo right there. And once again, made in the USA by Joe Porper on the inside. I like this color because it's like it's like a matte red, which is kind of cool. Stands out. Looks great if, uh, if you're rocking a red deck as well. And that is the Lore London corporate card clip. Next, we're gonna look at my first card clip that I produced, which is that. It is a gun metal gray, as you can see. It's got like this matte finish. And on the inside, it has my logo right there. And obviously made in the USA by Joe Porper. Now it's got some dings and dents in it, as you can see here. And the reason for that is I, this is my last one. And I was supposed to have one for me, but as I went to the post office, I left this on the top of my car in the package and drove off and this went flying everywhere. And so I couldn't obviously send that to the client. So I sent the mine and kept the dinged up one instead. So this is the only one I've got left. I had, uh, I think I only made 10 of these. So there are only 10 of these out there. Next up is my second card clip that I've ever produced. This is uh, a really nice one. I love this one. Uh, I think I made about 30 or 25 of these. Still have a few up for grabs. Um, this is a brass card clip, so very heavy. Once again, buddy Scott Jenkins hooked it up. There is a matte black finish and etched onto it is Memento Mori, just peeking out in gold there with the logo right there and then the Joe Porper signature on the inside. So I really like the weight of this, the look of this. Black and gold always looks so good. And uh, it's just a little heavy in the pocket, but it's one of those things that's more for like decorative. And I bring it like if I'm wearing a suit and tie and I wanna bring out a fancy card clip, I'll bring this with like maybe uh, some, some fancy deck. Looks good. That is the Memento Mori card clip. Next up, the Split Spades by uh, David Blaine. This is the Carbon Split Spade by David Blaine. Uh, as you can see, nothing engraved on the inside. And instead of having, uh, I really like the flat spines, sort of like uh, sort of like the previous ones we just looked at. But this one has more of like a rounded spine to it. And I think that's because of the material used, which is like carbon fiber. And you can see that carbon fiber. What's really cool is that you have his logo like within there. So that's not protruding, which looks really cool. This does scratch easily. Um, however, it's not too noticeable, but if you put it in the light, you can see all the little scratches and stuff when it gets scuffed up in your pocket. Um, but it is kind of cool because it is lightweight and it has that David Blaine, that David Blaine logo on it. One thing I would mention is that this is a bit tight if you're going to use embossed decks. So normally uh, a card clip fits uh, one deck of cards, one box of cards. If the box of cards has some embossing on it, let's say like this one here, this one has a little bit of embossing on it. As you can see, it's like raised. Well, it'll have a harder time squeezing into an average card clip, but normally card clips, you can grab them and you can open them up just a little bit. You'll hear like a little little sound. I don't recommend doing that too often, but you can do it just a little bit so that your your custom deck can fit your, your card clip. However, because this is carbon fiber, it's really impossible to open. Like it, it just goes right back and I wouldn't recommend it because it'll probably damage it really. So the funny thing is, this is like a split spades card clip, 
doesn't actually fit the split spades cards because they're all embossed, as are the Series A li uh, white lines and the B. And basically every deck that David Blaine's ever produced doesn't fit in his own card clip. Uh, that being said, it's a nice card clip, but uh, pretty useless. Next up, we're going to look at some Erdene's replica card clips. This one here was sent to me uh, years ago. Um, I bought this from Enigma. Enigma is a company uh, that was initially ran by, I think, Lloyd Barnes, who now works for us, and uh, Garrett Clark. So those guys made this little design. This is a leather bound card clip. So it's, it's uh, a Joe Porper card clip. It says in the inside, made by Joe Porper in the USA. And then it was leather bound and engraved with this nice gold lettering to replicate the expert at the card table book which I thought was really cool, and at the time, this is like one of the only ones that you can get your hands on. I think Dan and Dave put out one previously, but they only made 52 of them. Uh, so this was this was something that was available to people who couldn't get their hands on the other ones. So pretty cool. Uh, the leather did start sort of peeling off, and I think that's just due to like wear and tear. You can glue that back on. Um, but leather card clips, leather card clips I find, at the beginning, I, I really liked them. Uh, but the more I started using them, the more they started like peeling at the edges in my pocket, like this here. And that really started to bug me because then it's all I think about really. And I wanted the card clip to be just something I could throw in my bag or in my pocket. And so uh, more of a collector's item, I would say, not so practical. If you're gonna go, uh, if, you, if you want just a regular card clip, just grab a normal one that you don't mind damaging and digging up and throw that in your pocket. Unless you're going out to an event or something and you wanna look fancy. Now we'll take a look at the expert at the card table. Uh, brass edition made by a friend of mine once again Scott Jenkins who went ahead and did the brass on the inside and that is 24 of 50 so only 50 of these uh, actually exist as you can see it's, it's heavy once again so this is like the brass it fits decks really well uh, brass is easily you know you can open it and close it or whatever if you need it tighter or looser um, but it does have that look and you would think like this paint would eventually like start chipping off but it doesn't, it's powder coated, it's very, very durable, and it's got like a sort of a rough finish to it, which is really cool. And I think it looks a lot more like the book uh, than the other one, plus it's a lot thinner in your pocket, even though it probably weighs more. But I prefer this one. Uh, better durability, and I, I like the gold touch. I'm getting it. A few decks uh, sent to me from a good friend of mine, Ryan Edwards from RE Handcrafted. Did I say decks? few of these card clips and uh, let's get into them one by one. We'll start with this one. This is one of my favorite commissioned card clips that I had Ryan do for me. Uh, it's made of shark skin. Now I know that's probably not really ethical um, but it is made of shark skin. Right here you have this nice engraving. So this is engraved uh, sort of anchor that's painted white, looks really good once again. This is a Joe Porper card clip, however the spine on this one is the curved spine. So a lot of people think that uh, curved spines are better for protecting a deck and keep the deck uh, more compact than a flat spine. However, I think aesthetically, I think flat spines are just prettier than the curved one. I'm, I'm not a big fan of that curve, I think it looks kind of brutal. Um, but mind you, the craftsmanship on this is really good. Uh, this one has not peeled. It's really, really durable. And it's something that I used for a long time. I really like the colors of it and the look. So that's from Ryan Edwards. Same thing, gray shark skin with my logo on it. This is a one-off I had him do. Um, once again, same type of clip, same type of skin, just a different color and a different, uh, different thing on the front. But very cool, one of the first ones I did. Once again, uh, the thing is with thick card clips, they're a bit thicker in your pocket and you're just sort of conscious about the leather peeling. So uh, not, not a fan of them so much as I was at, um, at the time, but I still think they look great. Great for pictures. This was just, uh, actually when I met Ryan, um, I had this card clip, I had a card clip with me and it was a card clip I think I got at a magic shop. It's like a bridge size card clip. Like if you take a look at a, a deck box, like it's, it's smaller than a deck of cards. So the deck of cards actually protrudes out of the card clip. So completely useless, um, but un unknown to me at the time when I bought it, unfortunately. We, I was in Toronto and Ryan just literally uh, grabbed the card clip and put it into his pocket. 
and it didn't have it didn't have the leather on it. And he just put it into his pocket. I said, "What are you doing?" He's like, uh, "I'll cover it up for you and send it to you." So I said, "Cool." And then he sent me this, which is an eel skin. This is eel skin. Uh, pretty nifty. Once again, looks great on photos. Has a curved spine. The thing about eel skin is it's very frail. Like it does sort of like peel off easily, but it looks kind of has like an Edward Scissorhand look to it, doesn't it? Bondage. <laughs> a bond. This is my bondage clip right here. Next up, he has the first commissioned one, the first one that I asked him to do for me. This is like a brown tan leather. I like the leather on this, almost like a basketball leather, a football leather. Has my name engraved here, and what my what I used to go by on my Instagram name, which I regret now. It's like one of those names. You know, like the first email you've ever had. Like mine was like I got game. 69 or something. Well, that was like my first Instagram name, which was deceiving is believing and Also confusing apparently I had him engrave that on the curved spine and wrap up this this porpoise clip I thought it was I thought it was nice at the time. I still like it He actually made a close-up pad for me to match this which I really appreciated um, So that was like my first custom uh, leather card clip and lastly Ryan and I uh, had put together a project using the expert at the card table. We had the facsimile edition, so the, the original edition printed, and then we leather bound 52 of these. So 52 books were leather bound, and along with that, you would get one of these rare card clips. And these card clips, this is number one of 52. So there are 52 of them out there. This is number one, ultra rare, flat spined, Joe Porper, very, very thick leather and very well done, but once again, this is a, this is another expert at the card table replica, but in black, because it was a black edition book that we put out. So this is a really cool one, but once again, piece of memorabilia, not something I lug around with me, just something I like carrying uh, in my office. Now, here's the thing about the Abalone. I love them. I love them so much. These are available at dananddave.com. I actually owned two gold ones with the white abalone, which were my favorite card clips on earth. I, I, I love these card clips so much, but I lost both of them. I ended up, uh, they ended up sending me this one, which is super cool. I like the silver. I prefer the gold to be honest, but the silver is pretty nifty and the abalone on it is pretty cool. So that's actually laser etched within there. There's like an indentation and then this is put in on the inside of this and this is a I'm guessing aluminum. You have the Dan and Dave logo down there. Very sleek, very light, and very durable. This is not something that scratches easily. Even the spine is uh, is embedded here. It's just a beautiful, beautiful card clip. You sound like Steve Irwin there. It's a beautiful animal. Just a beautiful specimen. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at the size of him. Oh, I love this guy so much. It just melts me out. Anyways, you know what? I also had a brass clip they sent me that I lost. So I keep losing my Dan and Dave card clips. I don't know what it is. I think I'm cursed. This one I'm holding on to because I love it. Next up, this is an illusionist uh, card clip. These are, I think, one of the first card clips they had uh, done. These are the uh, Artifice, um, the Artifice Black Club. Oh yeah, this is the Black Club. So uh, when the Black Club came out, I signed up to it. Uh, Black Club, and it's still going on is that you would get like exclusive offers, you were allowed uh, receiving like free decks and stuff. And this was, uh, you could order this only if you were a Black Club member. So it's a card clip and it has like some really nifty engraving on it. And it has uh, the Artifice Black Club there. Um, I don't think this is a Porpoise clip though because there is no marking on it. And there's this cool little half moon here that allows you because one of the pet peeves uh, for everybody with a card clip is getting them out. If they're too tight, you're like <laughs> and you gotta like pull them out. This way it allowed it, I guess, to be a little bit easier to pull out, which was a good idea. So I thought that was a neat little thing and that's why I kind of picked it up. This uh, card clip was done by Vanishing Ink and I absolutely loved it at the time. I thought it was a genius idea. It's a card clip that loads from the top. So you have the Vanishing Ink uh, logo. This is also made by Porper and this is all one piece. So you have this like sort of nifty uh, metal looping like this. And what this is meant to do, this is meant to go like in your pants or on your belt. And you just hook it there in the back of your pants and you will be able to just slip out of deck. I like to put uh, some seals that I really like to just cover it up with seals for no reason. I found out that with use, um, either the decks, will, you know, they would slip out by themselves. So I tried to make it tighter, um, but that didn't really help situations. I think the base was just too wide. 
And at the end of the day, I felt like I was wearing a fanny pack. I mean, that's the truth. Nothing against fanny packs. I mean, fanny packs are very practical. Uh, however, just not the coolest thing to wear while you're at a gig. Um, but I did enjoy the design, and I think uh, I think the design is sort of a new take on it, which I really appreciated. And I think uh, I think as long as you're thinking forward, then it's okay by me. Ooh, next up. This is from my good friends over at Lost Art Magic, so Eric Jones and uh, Xavier Spade. This is another carbon fiber clip, but so I love the advancements in card clip technology, and I know uh, I use that term loosely, but card clips are being bettered, and there are, there are so many different types of card clips out there made of different materials that serve different purposes, and I'm really fascinated by them. And this one, ultra light, this weighs like, an ounce. I don't even know how much. Just, I don't even know how much an ounce is. But this weighs nothing. It's light as a feather. It has that carbon fiber on the inside, and on the outside, it has this wood veneer all the way around in one piece, which is gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Minimalistic. No engravings. No markings, which I really appreciate. It looks great on photos. I love the look of this. If you're into like that vintage, mid-century, modern sort of Danish design, this totally fits that style. Check it out, but I really like this clip. And last but not least. I can't talk about this one. All right guys, that about wraps up. My beard's so out of control. I'm going to the barbershop today. <sighs> guys, that about wraps up my video on my card clip collection. I hope you guys enjoyed that and I hope it was informative. Um, so just a, just a few notes about the card clip, why we have them. Uh, I think number one for me is aesthetics. I think, I think it just looks good if you're, if you're at a bar or at a restaurant or at a friend's house or in a casual setting and you take out a card clip and from the fancy card clip you take out a fancy deck of cards. It just looks great, it feels great. You can match your clothes to it so it almost, almost becomes like an extension of your style. So if you like wearing all black or you like uh, accenting certain things, without getting too complicated, card clips are meant to um, be an extension of your personality, I think. Are they really useful? In my opinion, they're not really useful. I think uh, decks of cards should be used and worn and whatever. I think they're just aesthetically really nice to look at. That being said, uh, some people do believe that you can get rid of the click. Uh, we did a test on Elog on uh, Illusionist channel um, and it turned out to be quite true. So for that, for that part of it, I guess it is useful. However, at a gig, I don't want to encumber my pocket space with a heavy card clip. Unless it's the only thing I'm bringing, unless I'm one of those you know, badass performers who could just grab a deck of cards and nothing else, which I admire, but I'm not one of those. I have a whole bunch of things in my pockets and uh, card clips aren't one of them when I'm performing. Mind you, I love them to death. I think they're a great, uh, great collector's item and a great sort of memorabilia to the history of where we're at. Like in 50 years from now, we're gonna look back on these card clips and be like, oh wow, we were doing that with card clips. Look what we're doing now. Now they're floating. I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna be. But uh, regardless, thank you guys for watching that video. I hope you found it informative and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, let me know in the comments uh, what your favorite card clip was. Which one was your favorite? And uh, we'll see you next time. Peace out.